Do you want to just like press this for part? It's worse. Hmm? I don't know if you'd want to do this, but if I log in with like my Zoom account, I can actually record into the cloud. I don't know if it's better though, because I'm not sure if it's preserved actually. Yeah. So I think it's probably yeah. better. It's usually easier like we just save it. Right. Yeah. What's up, team? Okay, so we go on. Um, I think we're ready to start soon. Yeah, sign in, please. Definitely boost our numbers. Yeah, that's, that sounds good. Is it recording already? Uh, yeah. Oh, I didn't realize. Yeah. Cool. What time is it? Should we give it a few more minutes or should we? Uh, we can probably get started soon. So, have you raise your hand if you came to our last workshop? Okay. What about the workshop for that? The rest or the SSD workshop or by rest of the APIs? Okay, cool. We're going to uh, talk a little bit about those concepts with REST APIs, but um, it's not, like you don't need any prior knowledge. We'll explain everything. So, yeah, we're going to be making a pretty simple online multiplayer game with WebSockets. And uh, before we do that, we'll give an introduction into some of the concepts we're going to be co like doing when we're, when we're doing the actual coding. So you have an idea. You're not just typing stuff without or copy pasting things without knowing what they do. And uh, yeah, pretty much like all of our workshop have been using Node and Express. So we're gonna be doing that again. Sometimes I think we should just be like the web development club because pretty much everything we do is like web development, but it seems to be pretty cool in my opinion. So yeah, Node, Express, and then this is the socket IO icon. So just use frameworks with JavaScript so that we can interact with the internet. And uh, yeah, I think we can probably jump into it now, 6.33, so let's get started. So the agenda is we're gonna talk about REST APIs versus WebSocket APIs, because we are gonna be using REST APIs today. So we'll dive into some of the differences. Um, then we're gonna talk like high picture, high level, what are we building and why are we doing it this way? And then how are we gonna build it? And then we'll jump into the code. Max is gonna lead that. So, yeah. Okay, so an API is just an application program interface. And uh, yeah, thanks. So an API is an application program interface. And if you think about it, that's kind of like what is the goal of this multiplayer game? Because each person is basically just an application. So we just need a way for two people who are running an application to talk to each other. And as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be talking about REST APIs and WebSocket APIs. So yeah, move on. So this is the OSI like uh, network layers. You learn a lot about this in, in operating systems and computer networking. But as you can see, we're just interacting with the very tip of it with the layer seven. And so REST APIs and WebSocket APIs, they sit on the very top of it, an application uh, layer protocol. So they're both basically just protocols that sit on top of this super complicated stack. So like down here, you have like the physical wires and then you have data layer and all that. And so here you see layer four is the transport layer. So both of these rely on TCP. This isn't like too like, you don't need to know this, but it's just so you have some background to what's happening. So they both use TCP, but we're going to use REST in the very beginning, and then we'll transfer over to WebSockets. So it takes me to the next thing. That's, yeah, okay, so some of the differences between them. So REST APIs are persistent, and or, uh, REST APIs are stateless, and they're request response, and WebSockets are persistent and bidirectional. So you can think of REST APIs as like sending mail back and forth and WebSockets are like telephone. because uh, So what it means by stateless is that every time you send a request, you need to send all the information required for that interaction with it. So are you an authorized user? Do you have the token to prove that you're authorized and all that? It's kind of similar to when you're sending mail, you include the address every time you send a piece of mail and who you're sending it to. Oh, can you go back quick? 
with but with what but with the telephone call you just like you have all the state when you're talking you don't have to introduce yourself every time you say something and web sockets are bi-directional meaning you can just uh like you don't have to close the connection you can the connection stays open and you can just send it back and forth whereas with the rest api you will never get a response from the server unless you send a request first so you can probably get an idea as to why we need the web sockets for the video game so I guess, yeah, a little bit more information here. WebSocket, oh, okay, so now transferring over from REST APIs and WebSocket APIs. Before I make this transition to this, does that make sense to everyone, like the difference between a WebSocket and REST API? Okay, so WebSockets are a little bit different from sockets. You'll interact with sockets in computer networking, but uh, sockets are just very low level, you have more control. It's basically like allowing two processes or two applications to talk to each other but there's a lot more details. The web sockets are very abstracted away for you. So it's just a high level protocol and it's easy to use. And it's specifically for the web, but they, they're kind of similar. They both let you just talk to applications, talk to each other. So today's goal is persistent bi-directional communication between users. So here you see there's like three users and they're all just talking to each other. They can send information to each other at any time. And okay, why would we not just use a REST API for this? Uh, there's lack of real-time capabilities. So if you're building a video game with a REST API, it's, it would be kind of strange to sync everything up because you'd have to have every user like send a request and then the server sends a response to all of them and somehow has to keep track of uh, like keeping everything in sync. Probably the way you would do this is like polling for updates. So you have all the clients like send a, a like here you see this picture, a client would say, do you have any updates to the server? The server would say no. And then every second or every timeout that you set, it will send another request. How about now, is there any updates? And then the server will say no. So that's kind of like polling. You have to, the client will have to keep asking the server for updates. So yeah. No. So you could use it for like a slow game, like chess or something, maybe like a turn-based game, but not ideal for most video games. So WebSockets are ideal in this case. So here you see, you have like the server, which is just one user. The way we're gonna do it is basically a user creates a game and then all the, and that user is the server. And then everyone else will join that game. And those users are the clients. So here's the server and the server can send updates at the same time, kind of broadcasting them to all the other users. And there's a high level architecture of our game. There's basically three steps the initial handshake, then you establish the connection, and then you just do the rest of the game through seamless communication. So the initial handshake is what we use REST API uh, for because if you think about it, when you're joining a game, you need a way to like, yeah, like you need a way to ask the server for the information that you need to join the game. So we use a get request, can I join your game? And then a get response, yes, and then you, are given a JavaScript file and an index uh, or an HTML file, so you can actually like run the game. And then that's when you start using the web sockets, and that's when you will initialize all the web socket uh, logic. So you'll create like event listeners, and you will start emitting events. And then, yeah, at that point you can think of it like initializing the web socket, and then. Moving on, uh, at this point, it's that's the you're using the WebSocket API, and here you can send updates because all the clients, including the server, have this JavaScript file, which contains the Socket API. Yeah, so that's it. We can jump into the coding now. We do like have quite a bit of stuff to get through because I I just kept like adding more to this doc. Um, it, it's so uh, if you look in the announcements, there is a Google Doc here. Um, I will be. I'll get up your way. I think we're fine. It's it's you, my. Oh, <laughs> All right, there we go. 
Uh, do you have... I don't know why it's giving feedback. I think it's from the speaker, like... <laughs> Wait, okay. Room volume, down. Yeah, we shouldn't need volume for this. How is it still? I turned the volume off. Okay. Um, I want the people online to be able to hear. It okay, it's it's probably gonna be fine. Um okay, sorry. So you guys should be able to see this workshop real quick. Uh if you don't already have Node and GitHub installed as is uh recommended here, you should do so because and that I did link to our intro to development doc because that has like more detailed instructions because those two are needed for this. And you're just gonna start by cloning this GitHub repo. It's it's like a very simple template and it contains a JavaScript and an HTML file. So while you guys do that, I will set up the sharing on Zoom. Oops, sure oh, where is that? Uh, where is that Google Doc? It's on Discord. Yeah, announcements. Let me. I can. Do you want? Like, I can put up a link to the Discord here if you want. Why'd you disable screen sharing on that? I didn't, I think it's just like people. <laughs> Share all participants. I'm going to just put this link um, into the document in case you need it. So but we don't. They can't get the document. If they have yeah, but they can look up here for the document. Oh, true. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this feels like kind of like a very small screen for this stuff. But okay, so I'm gonna assume you guys all got the document downloaded, hopefully good. All right, CJ is giving you a thumbs up. Um, but so basically, right now we have the index of HTML file and the JavaScript file. So I'm just gonna like draw this out real quick. JavaScript, HTML. So in the like last year, what we just did. Uh, with this was kind of like the simplest possible thing, which was just a chat app, right? And how that worked is basically you would, this is like the actual web page that's being displayed, and this is the code that's running the web page. So a user on the web page could kind of type in a message, right? Uh, say like, hello. And then the HTML would, using sockets, <clears throat> would broadcast that over to the JavaScript. Um, and then at that point, the JavaScript with a new message um, could take like the ID of the socket that sent this message over and then broadcast this marker sucks. Basically broadcast that to every other user that was connected to the um, server as well. So basically that's what we're going to be emulating here as well. Uh, for like player movement, for instance, we're going to have a listener here in the HTML, which will send events to the JavaScript, which will then take that and send it to all the users. Uh, but right now, we don't have much. So the index.html, uh, you can run this by doing node index.js. The wish is being limited. Um, yeah, the index.html at the moment just contains like one div hello world, nothing really. And the index.js, it's just 
using Express to essentially set up on the port 3000. Uh, it's saying, okay, take all the files in the public folder and like expose it to the local host. Uh, so you could see like, for example, like it's using index.html because that's what's in the public folder. If we had like a test.html, it would uh, display that, it doesn't have that. So it's just using index, which is the hello world. So how are we actually gonna start building this game? Well, uh, to have a game, you obviously need players. Can you guys edit that? I hope not. All right, hold up. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm too used to like sharing docs and then just like automatically clicking like you can edit. All right. Hopefully, hopefully no one's put anything <laughs> in there already. <laughs> okay. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of copy and pasting here because it is a lot of code to get through. And thankfully we do have a lot of time, but uh, get your control C, control V ready. So in the in the index.js, first thing we're doing, we're making an array of players and we're going to like very simply, like when uh, the IO, like when everything connects, you create a color for the player and you like initialize this player object, right? And then, I forgot this little line of code. We just place the new newly created player into the array of players. So right now, uh, it's all it's doing is just making like one player and it's putting us into this JavaScript players array. Pretty simple. But the thing is right now, it's just doing it like on one client, one user side. So using the sockets, we need to like emit the fact that we've just created this new player to all the other people connected to the server. So we do it with this code. And real quick, I'll just go over this as well. Uh, the difference between socket.emit is that socket.emit is just, is literally like broadcasted to everyone, but socket.broadcast is broadcasted to everyone except for like the person that broadcasted it, if that makes sense. So here, like we already know that there's a new player because the new player is us. So you just have to tell everyone else that there's a new player. Can you write that inside the callback? Uh, yes, uh, th there is in in the in the um, a lot of this code is just all inside this like on a connection code. Uh, and I do specify that inside the doc. Uh, there's only like one function that's written outside. So uh, okay. as a good rule of thumb, like right inside here. So okay, what are we actually doing here? Uh, once we create the player, we emit to everyone, including our like own player to like start uh, start or kind of like initialize, I guess, with, with this player new players array. And then to everyone else, like just or show that there's a new player. Wait, so I think like in the in the one on line 39. Yeah. What's the purpose of like sending it to yourself too? Like I know you said for the bottom one it like send it to everyone but like yourself. What's the purpose of like sending it to yourself? Like why would you want to do that? Uh, I think so. We'll, we'll see in just a second. Here in the HTML file, we actually, we actually like use. I think so. Yeah, we actually have code for this like event for this initialization event because once we get like the array of players, we just go through all of them and it's just like actually like display them on the web page. So if you don't uh, send it to yourself at that point, like the uh, like HTML code, like they it wouldn't wouldn't display anything. Right. It wouldn't know what's displayed. Okay, so we can save that, and then we're starting to work on our HTML. We don't need this div here. This was just a placeholder. Sorry, hello world. Uh, and instead, we're going to replace it with these scripts. So these are all like socket scripts. Um, and you can see that there's now they're now like receiving what we had, as I told CJ, what we had in the JS initially. So here, when you get the players, it will just essentially take out every player of the player's ID. Um, but sorry, it will take every player out of the player's array and call this um, create player element function, which just like creates a div, literally just going to be a box for us and adjust the styles. So it gives it a class name 
It gives it colors. It gives it positions, yada, yada, yada. And then it will append it to the document body so we can actually see it. So right now, because of the fact that we're just creating a div for the new player, if we refresh this page, we shouldn't be able to see anything. But if we look in the dev tools, there's actually like a small thing up here, which is the player. Uh, but obviously like this is this is useless for an actual game, right? So this is where we're gonna introduce styling to give the player a little bit more like uniqueness. <laughs> Do you guys want me to turn off all the lights? It'd be easier to see. Yes. Oh. Oh. I don't know if they did that. It's worse. <laughs> I like it. We you can do it this way. You'll copy the styles into the head. Yeah. Um, like, if you ever need questions, like Philip, I'm sure can answer. Oh yeah. You guys are not going to create it. Stop. Like reading it off the map. So yeah, uh, this styling just goes in the header. We can just shove it in the header. Uh, this is everything we need for the rest of the workshop. So we won't need to touch it again. And that means that if we refresh, we now have cubes being created. These are our players and there's no deletion of the players. So we literally can just like make infinite cubes. Hooray. So essentially just, yeah, I'll let people get caught up, but essentially what's just happening is it's saying like, it's creating a new player object and then it's saying, okay, it's broadcasting this new player to everyone, including yourself, at which point it'll just use this create player element to add it to the document body. Wait, are you getting multiple points? Uh, so, the server, yeah, uh, just refresh because the server is like still open. So it literally will just like keep instantiating like player objects. I'm noticing that if after, after enough times, it's not adding any more players. Why is that? Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. I just put it down. <laughs> yeah, there is no like lag coded to stop the number of players or anything. So you literally can just spam it. All right, I'm gonna go around and help people. So yeah, real quick, uh, every time you edit the JS file, you will need to relaunch uh, the server with this command. If you update the index.html, it will reflect that. Uh, it will fetch the new file, but if you're editing like this, which we will be a lot, no, sorry, not this, JavaScript files, so, uh, you will need to relaunch. Right. So as cool as these like unlimited players are, 
Um, this is not how we want our actual game to function. So I think right now we will create a route to, and we will disconnect the players. So real quick, if we just make a new tab, uh, it will have like the same effect, but it will add a player and you will be able to see all the other players from all the other tabs that are open, right? Uh, but we want players, if we close these tabs, like those players are still there on the server. That's why if we open this tab back up, like they're still appearing there. But if a user disconnects, we want the player to be removed as well. So that's where we're adding this new like emit code. So this is placed in the JavaScript file. And I would recommend just like shoving all your dot emit things together. Where if we get this like disconnect event, it will just delete this on the like JavaScript server side and then emit it, like re-emit it on the uh in to the index.html. And you'll see that like this will follow this trend a lot, right? Because um we want both the HTML file and the JS file to be updated with like the most recent information. And we like so that we can we want the HTML to tell the JavaScript something, like I said here before, and then we want this to broadcast it to all the other clients that are connected. So you can see here that after we delete this on the server, we tell every connected client that a player has disconnected along with the ID of the socket that has disconnected. So obviously, uh, we want this to update the front end, the HTML, the website that's being shown. So we're going to place this in our HTML file. So, like so, and so basically, uh, the player with the socket ID just remove it from the document body, and like update the like the local player elements, right? So if we launch the server, yeah. Oh shoot. We can now see that there's only one player per tab, but if we were to open a new tab, there's a second player, right? And if we, come on, if we close this first tab, it'll be just it'll be removed from this other tab. So we now have like fully asynchronous connect connections and disconnect disconnections. Okay, but obviously like at the moment it's not a game, right? You can join, you can create a dot, but that's no fun. So right now we want to add movement to our game. I just thought of something I could do. Let's leak my IP. I remember finding this earlier. So basically, uh, there's a way to do this with like something else called Ingrock, but since we're all on the same Wi-Fi here, what I can do is I can like you guys can connect to my IP and then use the router to essentially like join the same server instance I have. So you guys will all be showing up up there once we implement movement. Um, well, actually, well, let's do this first, so we can kind of get the base of the workshop done before we try that out. Uh, <laughs> but it, it's gonna be exciting, guys. So in the index.html, we want the website to be noticing when we press our arrow keys. So what we're gonna do is, let's add it right here. We're gonna be adding an, an event listener. So when the HTML file detects that a key has been pressed, we decide what it is, or yeah, we determine what like key has been pressed. And then we just send this direction, again, just back to the JS file. And then in the JS file, we take the direction we moved in, and then we tell every single connected client, yo, uh, this one, this player with this socket ID has moved in this direction. And then we go back to the HTML. Uh, also, uh, this is the one thing that goes outside of the, like, the whole connection socket. So be careful here. Should the event listener be an index.js or 
Uh, this should be in the HTML because this is all inside of script, a script tag. Uh -huh. So we're just writing JavaScript. Uh -huh. um, yeah, because we want like the, we want the actual web page to be listening for key presses. Oh. Nope, I'm crazy. Okay, so yeah, we also have this uh, handle player movement, which I was abstracting a bit earlier, but <laughs> um, we convert like this um, like direction that we got earlier just into like a, a set of X and Y relative values. And then and then that's when we send it back to the HTML file. Were you saying something, Philip? Or, or... Um, yeah. And so like before, uh, we're now sending to the HTML file uh, a socket ID, a new X and a new Y. So if we go into the HTML file, put this before my event listeners, we can now receive this player moved event, which will, again, spec just specify the player that's been moved and update its styling. It also has some like little animations here. So if we save both and reload the server, we can now move our little cube. This is so. Uh, this is where I'm going to now expose the IP. I did this before, but here we go. This IP, guys. Oh, I can actually put this in the uh, intro thing. But since we're all on the same network, this is essentially just redirecting to my local host. So now you guys should be able to join it. Uh, let, let me throw this in here. Why not? <laughs> Clearly, nothing can go wrong. There you go. <laughs> OK, all right, it's starting. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's linked at the very top of the document, but basically, also, there's no bounds for like going too high or going too low. So be careful, guys. Don't lose yourselves. <laughs> okay, this is cool. Okay, but while we let you guys do this, uh, does anyone need help here? So I have a question about this, like yeah. conceptually. Yeah. So in the, is the index.html basically like the client and the index uh, index.js the server or something? I think yeah, that's that's a way to think about it. Uh, the .html is really, yeah, it's, it's what's being displayed like right here to each client. So essentially it is really just like the fourth bit part of each client. Uh, and the, the like JS file, that's what's actually like doing, making connections like between all the like, connected clients. So it, you can kind of almost think about it like front and back. Okay. So like what we talked about earlier, when when you when you first went into this URL, this, uh, URL you, you're going to the server, yeah. and then the server is giving you this HTML file. And then once you have that HTML file, you can run the JavaScript that's inside of the HTML file. 
So you, that's kind of like you're downloading the game. And then that that this JavaScript that you've downloaded through this HTML file is what allows you to send the messages with the broadcasting image back to the server. So interesting. Yeah, so you're right. Like the HTML file is essentially the client, and then the JavaScript file is essentially the server. Okay. And in both cases, so both can set and uh, both can send each other messages using the emit function, and both can receive messages using the on function. Exactly, and that's, and that's the WebSocket API. Like they, you can look in the documentation for like the, they have really good documentation. Like this code is basically their hello world program. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Now you need to play around. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it must be oh I don't know. So uh, okay. yeah, I'm assuming it's like it knows where you can probably click into it I guess it must be you there, yeah. So you follow that link. That's where we're talking about the modules. What is it? How is it? Hey guys, let's spell you at. <laughs> I don't think we have enough blocks for that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 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 You can duplicate the tab to get more players as well. Oh, you're oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Duplicate it. Okay. I think it has to do with our um, Okay. That, that's it's hard to get more spiking. It's and you like tell it to like a or a and it just, yeah, it's yeah. yeah. too many. It's like 40. And then you go over the way to I have three tabs open right now. You know where it's coming from. Yeah, if you open more tabs, you can get more players. I got infinite players. It's it's great how easy it is. So we're going to go to the bottom. So we're going to see where it's going. But yeah, if you want to know, sit at the bottom. So you can go to socket IRO. So we have like a little more detail at the bottom. How does the HTML file know IP address to go to? And uh, I'll show you guys. 
So someone was asking, how does the HTML file know what IP address to go to? Oh, here. There's a lot of logic inside of uh, inside of here. Typically, you would pass in an IP address here, but the default parameter, so if you don't pass in anything, is the address of the host. So when the server, which is this file, sends this file to you, it's passing in the default parameter, which is itself. So when you receive this file, you have the host's IP address already in there. What's happening? Oh, wrong, wrong post. Oh, sorry. What are you trying to do? I don't know. They're making something. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, hi. You yeah. up? Oh, we got a lot of people. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't think you can. Okay. It could be that it just did young dog. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So okay. Um, now we we can add new new features to the app, guys. What is? Who's yeah, like kicking my things down? Because yeah. I'm looking, I'm looking at like how uh how it like determines the color, and it looks like it just chooses a random hue, and it uses the same saturation luminance. So yeah, yeah, uh, it's like high saturation, high luminance, like random hue. Mm -hmm. So I guess if you get like white, pure white, you would like pure white, you would still be able to see when you're like passing over other people. Yeah, but, true. Yeah, but white is not on like the three sixty degree hue, so. Also you true. Have, you would have to have a different movement and start saturating that. Okay. Looks like I coded it well then. Okay. Uh so let's it's okay, it's fun. Let's add more stuff. <laughs> um, like we said, the base function or like the socket workshop we did in the previous years was a chat room. So how about we add chatting to this app? So each each player can like chat a little bit. Okay. Let me close these tabs. Scroll back down. So yeah, this is like the second like chunk of this workshop. We are kind of running out of time, so I'm just gonna be quick about it. Uh, if you fall behind, at least you got the first part. Hopefully you got the first part. <laughs> um, so in the header, right where we put our styles, we're putting a link to this like Google fonts of like a, a little pixely gamey font. So we can just use it in the app. Additionally, we're going to add a little bit of a chat box just above the script here. And we're going to be adding both usernames and chat messages at the same time. So it's going to be it's going to be a bit like crazy with what's being added, but if you kept up so far, it's just more of the same. Um, if I refresh, I should be able to see here. Now there's like a chat box here. You can move this. Uh, and how we're going to take the username is literally like in the index.html. As soon as the page loads, uh, we're just going to like ask the, the we're just going to set up a prompt that I can show you guys. We'll just pop up and say, yo, enter your username. Uh, 
And so you can see that this emits the like name given um, like event to the JS file. But before we do that, we're also going to implement sending messages. So these will go in the scripts. Oh God, it's my bad. So essentially, we're just adding another event listener, which detects if you click like the send message button, and it'll like take the message that was, or it will take the <clears throat> the value that was in the input box, and then just emit it to the backend, the JS file again. <clears throat> so, oh, also like you can do this here too. Uh, enter key pressed will also send the message just for a little bit more functionality. Everyone doing all right so far? It's good to hear, Ryan. Okay, and then once again, we have something in the HTML that's Detecting stuff client side. So now we need to send it to the server and we already have the events. Uh, so we're just going to add code to the server to handle when these events are broadcasted. So when the user inputs a chat message or a name, uh, it will assign that value to the user object or the player object and then broadcast to everyone the new, the updated object data. And likewise, like we've been doing in the index.html, we're going to capture the dot emit events and display the updated information on the web page. So what we're doing is we're just uh, modifying like the inner text value of the um, of like the player's children uh, to be the name of the user or the user's message, respectively. And then last thing, sorry I'm going fast, but we're almost out of time and I want everyone to be like able to play on this like end product. We need like some way to actually display this text in the player. So what we're gonna do is in this create player element, we're going to add this code, which on top of creating a div, it will create once two text um, elements and then just like, insert them into the uh into the player and before i show this off uh if you're curious we have information about like hosting this stuff locally over the ip address uh, ip address and then also over ngrok which i have that you really said like download and sign in on your computer to do this but this will work over any wi-fi and when we, like, I have it, I could do it right now, but like, there's no point since we're all like literally sitting here connected to the same Wi-Fi network. But with that being said, let's relaunch the server. Actually, let me, hold on. Oh, gotta kill all these players here. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Who's calling me an NPC? Get, get back here. <laughs> okay. So, do you guys have any questions? If you guys have any questions, I'll be coming around to them. Oh my god. <laughs> Perfect.
I find it amazing how like he did all that. It didn't take that long to end this point. Yeah, it's so easy. It's like almost <laughs> <laughs> but it's pretty powerful. And then you were at the doctor. You were at the doctor. Um, so like you could, uh, you know how to deploy it. You know, so like at this point, you know how to build a server. Yeah, but I don't have the money. Okay. And I don't want to spend money on the But you get for free. Yeah, if you win, you make a trial. <laughs> I don't like free trial. <laughs> oh, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a three month free trial. And then they don't. Three months too short. <laughs> I want to go to 70 years. I'm going to the doctor. Yeah, I think we recorded it. But yeah, like essentially, what you could do in this case is you have this server, or this whole thing really is just the server and think about it. You're just sending an HTML file to the people in that company. So you take this whole project. There's a lot of ways you could deploy it, but if you're looking at how we did it over, so you put it into a container, <laughs> put the container on the cloud, and anyone can access it. And then you could, from at this point, you could make a really cool. I remember I used the iPhone. I was starting and I was getting a picture of it. I was like, I was like, I was like, I was like, and like I the whole like, oh, yeah. oh. But the thing is, um, it would use like, 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 like I think with Engrock is I think Engrock is more like a development tool. Yeah. I don't think it's meant for like deploying things. It's uh so in our project, um, it's basically used to like you can quickly expose like your URL to the outside world. So like for example, you know if you were saying earlier, like if you access this URL from a different network, you would not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but Engrok is like a, a quick solution to that, like a band-aid to just like Engrok will like you install Engrok and then it takes that address and then exposes it using like its own code. You guys have been naughty. I'm taking away your 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 privileges. I look at this. The styling. Say goodbye. Say goodbye to your long names. Yeah. No. Wait. It didn't work. Yeah. I, there's a reason, but uh, that's why it's like it's easy. Fine. To use in my it, it worked for you. Anything after like, like I, I have one. It, it only gets anything after a space. Space. Anything after a space. No, it. it, it I, there's, there should, there should be like a character limit, limit, kind of. And then I can have yeah, so whatever I want. Like like oh, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, because it's probably trying to wrap those or something. It's yeah. fine. It's fine. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You can do that. Oops. Oops. Here's the entire code for the workshop in case you needed it. Oh my god. Well, I was Oh my god, there's more? Who's yeah. doing this? Yeah, Wait, look at the square bar. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. 
<laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. You do the work. Yeah, we talked a little bit about it. Yeah, it's like man. Fun. Yeah. It's actually really fun. It does. For mobile uh, users. Wait, are you a Yeah, 
Thank you. Stop sharing. And I'll end the Zoom. Bye.